All right, what we're doing today, we're doing tr prediction of transmission line impedance. So that's the experiment there. So, as you know, if you have a load impedance that's mismatched, then a distance away, the actual impedance at the other end of the cable might be different. Very most likely will be different. So what we're going to do is do a real-world version. This is the load right here, which has a particular impedance. Here's the transmission line and then we would be measuring the impedance at the other end here. But before we measure it, we need to predict what it will be. So, if I use the network analyzer and I connect my load here, then I can measure what the impedance is. That's the impedance. So up there it says 29 plus J4.4. So 29 plus J4. Plus 29 plus J4. So I can say load impedance is equal to 29 plus J4 ohms. And then I can normalize that for a 50 ohm Smith chart. So 29 divided by 50, that's 0.58. So normalized, 0.58 plus J4 divided by 50, 0 0.08. So that's the normalized impedance. So what I can do, I can plot that. 0 0.58 plus J.08. So 0 0.58, that's going to be right around here. Plus J.08, right about here. So that would be my load impedance. So if I take my load impedance and I get a compass, do my VSWR circle, all that stuff, and I can draw my VSWR circle, which represents every possible impedance on the line. Then what I need to do is I can take a straight line, and draw that out here, like that. Here I see start 0 0.018. Then I need to rotate the number of wavelengths uh, that the cable is. So how many wavelengths long is this cable? I rotate that many wavelengths. I draw a new line, and that will help me. But I don't know how many wavelengths long this cable is. I don't even know how many meters long it is. So if I measure the length of this cable, I get 16.5 inches. Okay, so I say here, length equals 16.5 inches. Oh. Okay, so if I say 16.5 inches times 2.54, that's how many centimeters it is, 41.91 centimeters, so length equals 0 0.419 meters. Okay, that's fine. And what I didn't tell you before is that the frequency that I've chosen to use is 100 megahertz. So that means wavelength is equal to wait c times velocity factor is equal to f lambda that means lambda is equal to c times velocity factor over f so c is the speed of light 3 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second velocity factor in this case this is a cable with polyethylene dielectric so that means the velocity factor is 0.6 Six, 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 so two thirds, and then frequency is 100 megahertz. So this actually, if you if you do the math, it works out to be two meters. The wavelength is two meters. So if the wavelength is equal to two meters, one wavelength is two meters. You could say one meter is half a wavelength. Okay. So if the length is equal to, where do I have it here? Zero point. 419 meters, it's 0.419 times 1 meter would be 0.419 times half a wavelength. So 0 0.419, 0 0.419 divided by 2, 0.2095, let's say 0 0.21, 0 0.21 meters. Oh, no, sorry, 0 0.21 wavelengths. Yeah, 0.21 wavelengths. Okay, so if we know it's 0.21 wavelengths, 
if we're starting here at this point at the load we add what did I say? 0 0.21 wavelengths or yeah, 2, 1 wavelengths we end up 8 plus 0 is 8, 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 0 is 2 we stop at 0.228 okay so then that means we look here on the outer scale at for 0.228 that's over here so then I draw the new line Now let's see where that crosses the circle. That's going to be Z in. So that point there, so we have Z load, we rotated the same number of wavelengths as the cable is and we stopped here. That's the input impedance. So that's the same as starting at the load, going the appropriate number of wavelengths to here. So starting here, to there. Starting here, to there. Towards the generator. So now I look here. This happens to be, that's about Z in normalized would be 1.65 plus J plus J 0 0.25. So that means Z in, I just take that and multiply by 50. 1.65 times 50. 82.5 plus J 0.25 times 50 12.5 82.5 plus J 12.5 So if I use the network analyzer the marker should end up right about there So I'm going to see if that actually works So I have my my cable I can take my load Connect it to the end of the cable, like this. There it is. If I connect this to the network analyzer, I should be able to look at the Smith chart and see that it ends up where I thought it would be. So my plot is there on the Smith chart, and then I look at the network analyzer, and it's right about the same place. You see here? connected there. So what I'm doing is I'm measuring the impedance right here and it turns out to be that. Looks a, a lot like what I've seen on my Smith chart. The actual one is about 70 plus J25 and what did I do? 82.5 plus J12.5. So there's a little bit of a difference and the main difference is due to the fact that this barrel connector here has a different velocity factor than the rest of the cable. So my calculation of the actual number of wavelengths of the cable is a little bit different, and that accounts for the error there, but from the looks of things, it looks like I've done what I was supposed to do correctly. And that's how you predict transmission line impedance.